It's Dirty Story Night, and we're at second place of our Dinosaur Month, in which the competitors had only 30 minutes to write. Dan is back with a brand new story. Before you listen to Dan's story, though, please check out our parent network, ibdpresents.com. We've got so much good stuff on there, including a lot of written work. Samantha Stark writes some micro stories that are typically about a page in length. Stark Stories Next, season one is available now. Jerome Wetzel writes, G.O.D. is my BFF which is not at all religious, uh, but does deal with some interesting questions and a character that may be a god or a devil or who knows what it could be. Um, And then there's the Universe Journey novel, Love's Lost Lost, which is a full-length sci-fi comedy novel featuring the crew of the ASS Thrifty, who you may hear in It's All Been Done Radio Hour. All of those are available on our website and on Amazon.com. Now enjoy Dan's Dinosaur Dirty Story Night. This is uh, Dan Kondo. <sighs> Before I puke. <laughs> mm. Hello, my name is David Attenborough, and welcome to National Geographic Presents T Rex Titillation. <laughs> Fred was really nervous. He had never been on a blind date before. Joe, his hunting buddy, had set him up with a sweet young female named Charlotte, whom he had met through his hunting buddy when they were hunting Stegosaurus together, because them sons of bitches are hard to put down. Fred had no luck with the more mature females, and his friend knew of a younger one who was looking for a mating partner. So, after killing a young juicy triceratops and dragging it to the spot on the lake they had agreed to meet, Fred waited for his dinner date to arrive. Then he heard the slow, heavy sound of footsteps coming through the nearby tree line. She emerged through the granary, and she was gorgeous. Beautiful muscular physique, a strong, free-swinging tail, and teeth that would put a spinosaur to shame. He instantly fell for her. She met his gaze and cautiously approached, sniffing in the scent of Fred's fresh kill. He gave a low, rumbly greeting. (coughs) I didn't know... What to get you, so I thought this would be satisfying, but not too filling. (laughs) She looked from the dead juvenile herbivore to the nervous, toothy smile of her prospective suitor. She rumbled back. Thank you, it is a very thoughtful gesture. They began to tear into the still bloody carcass of Fred's kill, rumbling and growling back and forth all evening as the sun set over the water. As the sun went down, Charlotte needed to head back. Fred cooed to her gently. <coughs> well, let me at least walk you home. <laughs> As they reached the mouth of her cave, she shared one last awkward necky embrace, because you can't hug with them baby arms. (laughs) 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 And Fred, feeling bold, gave her an affectionate nip on her muscular neck. Charlotte growled with aroused sexual curiosity. She gave him a playful nip back, and they looked into each other's yellow eyes for a long time. Then Charlotte pounced. She opened her maw wide and enclosed Fred's throat in her gape, gently running her saw-like teeth along his leathery skin. Fred roared with reproductive desire and bore down, tackling Charlotte on her back and gently nipped at her belly scales, his twelve-foot-long ancient reptilian cock beginning to swell with his need to breed. (laughs) Fred roared... (laughs) I will make a mother out of you. (laughs) 
but Charlotte looked coyly into his eyes, and she purred. Not before I have my fun. (laughs) She knocked him onto his back and pinned him down with her giant clawed foot. He did not resist. He was a slave to her scaly desires. She grasped his throbbing member, now the size of a school bus that all the kids could ride, (laughs) with her tiny T-Rex hands and began to work it feverishly. (laughs) Only able to focus on a small part of the tyrannic telewacker, Charlotte worked the pulsing head of her new mate's giant Jurassic joystick till Fred began to growl with oncoming orgasm. (laughs) She stopped, leaned down, and growled, Now you do me. He roared with lust and knocked her back, throwing her onto her back, because I'm a shitty drunk writer, (laughs) exposing her beautiful, scaly pussy lips. He opened his jaws wide and began to work her with his gigantic tongue. She roared in ecstasy as his rough taster rubbed her wet waiting lips, and then she screeched, (coughs) Get that fucker in me. She struggled to her feet and bent over, moving her tail to the side and presenting her wet breeder box. (laughs) Fred hastily mounted his newfound lover and rammed his reptile rocket into her. His tiny arms flailed widely as he thrust deep inside her. They awkwardly flailed in the throes of intercourse until Fred unleashed his seed. Semen rocketed out of Fred's fantastic fertilizer at such a velocity that it would topple a boulder. A volume enough to fill a large kiddie pool that doesn't fucking exist yet. It drowns Charlotte's egg canal, which I'm guessing that's what it's fucking called, and impregnates her. Then they go their separate ways, because I don't fucking know if T-Rexes stayed in breeding pairs forever. I'm just going to assume the males were breeding machines and not parents. 